finished rewatching Gravity Falls yesterday. <laughs> oh? Yeah, it's, it was a lot more emotional going through those last few episodes than I... <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Going through those last few episodes, you really got me. I don't know why it got me that hard, but oof. Oof. Yeah. Man, just... Uh, why can't I hold all these feels? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it kind of was. Man, that show is so good. It is a good show. It um, really is. I do not regret getting the Blu-ray set at all. That was a good decision. <laughs> yeah, I might have to go and find one of those. I, I still haven't even gotten to the special features yet because yeah, there's a bunch. I was like, oh, here's the the documentary thing on the on the making of the show. It's almost two hours long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's the lead scenes. That's almost an hour long. Isn't Alex Hirsch working with Netflix just now and something? Yeah, he just announced. They just announced that there he's working for Netflix to do a show. And as he said, there are no S. There's no S and P department at Netflix. Yay! I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, um, Gravity Falls is great, and um, I gotta still check out a lot of the special features because that stuff looks really interesting. Yeah. I just haven't had time to go through, like, seven hours or something of footage. But whatever. We're not here to talk about Gravity Falls. We're here to talk about ponies. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Pony 4 and 1. This is number 236 for the week of September 9th, 2018. I am Nemesis, and I am joined, as always, by Alcatraz. Yo. Yes. Not a lot of news this week. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is surprisingly been, small it's amount. It's been a quiet week. It has been. But we do, we'll, we'll still talk about what we did find. Uh, we do have, of course, a new comic that just came out to talk about. We there's the washouts, the uh, quote unquote new episode that aired in the U.S. <laughs> new, yes. Always yeah. going to have big quotes around that word yeah. now. Yeah, for at for, least this season. For the next, the rest of the season, yeah. But yeah, so that's that. And at the end of it all, we got a little bit of a uh, fan content. It's a little bit. It's a little bit. But probably should go ahead and get started. Because why not? Why not? We got nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah, got nothing else to do. <laughs> Except just keep shifting along on this mortal coil. Uh... But anyway, uh, if you want to follow along with the news, go to pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes. It's spelled L-A-B-S-Y-N. And details and whatnot are there because we're not going to get super in-depth. And fandom news. Uh, voiced Anthro Pony mod for Fallout 4 has been released. Uh, MLP... Main six companions, Anto versions. Yep, the, the voice parts of it. It requires the Crimes Against Nature yes. mod and other things that and add the actual world characters. And New World slash Far but... Harbor uh, expansions. Yeah. So if you want all of that, if have, you want it, there you go. voiced pony companions. Yes. I have no idea what it sounds like because I haven't touched it at all. But it it's scares there. me. <laughs> yeah, it does. It unnerves me seeing that those weird Crimes Anto. Against Nature is a good name for the mod. Yeah. And uh, speaking of Fallout, Fallout Quest Your Remains version 0.7 has been released. Little side scrolling Fallout game. I believe it's the Russian one we've talked about a couple times. Uh, flash based. Not flash based, based, but yeah. The... Anyway, side scrolling. Oh. Yeah. Want to check that out? That's still going. Yep. Seems decent. And Equestria Girls news. Yes, we're skipping that far ahead. Because there's nothing else. <laughs> Roller Coaster Friendship Part 2 has been released on YouTube. As expected. Yes, as Like expected. every Friday. Mm-hmm. Well, Until it's done. Yeah, that'll be a couple more weeks. Yeah. And in Friendship is Magic news, I have no idea what's even going on with Netflix anymore. Yeah. Because, <laughs> okay, so over the last week, this is where the most of the new bulk of news happened. Um, all seasons except three and four were removed from Before Netflix the USA. Yeah, and that was even before the scheduled removal date. Yeah, that was, they are all just removed, and then they kind of came back partially. Because now although the first four seasons are still available, but not the five, six, seven, or or, or you know, even eight's not even been added yet. Yeah. At all. And finally, the the, the removal date, date has been moved, moved to uh, the 15th of September. Yeah, so it's like... <laughs> 
things are happening and we don't know what. <laughs> it's it, it, confusing. It, I don't know why there's a partial thing. I'm, I'm not sure if there's some weird con. I'm not sure what the heck's going on, honestly. It's just part yeah. of it's just not there anymore for no good reason. Well, there's probably a reason. We just have no idea what I it said is. said no good reason. <laughs> it could be a good reason. We just don't know what. Anything that was involving lawyers is probably not a good reason. Eh, yeah, I guess if you want to go that route, <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it could be some weird things in the contracts have like different dates for when they have to be removed or something yeah. like that. I don't know. Still build 915. I'm looking at still just four, first four seasons. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Just keep an eye on that. It's probably coming back. Based on this, I'm getting, yeah, those no negoti- negotiations are just getting weird. Yeah. And they're not short. No. Legal negotiations are very rarely quick. So, uh, yeah. Netflix. Hopefully that gets figured out soon. And finally, Discovery Family has released their twenty October 2018 highlights, which include the air dates of the last few season 8 episodes, which includes... Let's go scroll down. Father Knows Beast. When a strange dragon crash lines on Ponyville claiming to be Spike's father, Spike is ready to do anything his dad says in order to learn how to be a real dragon. That's October 6th. And October 13th will be School Rays Part 1 and 2. When magic of a quest for mysterious fault begins to fail, Twilight leaves her friends on a quest for answers, leaving the school friendship open to attack from a dangerous mastermind. I wonder who that is. Yeah. <laughs> and the second synopsis is a big spoiler, so I'm not going to even read it. I'm <laughs> Big spoilers. Sec- yeah, sec- second part synopsis is a big spoiler, so I'm not going to read it, but it's there if you want to look, or if you, you know, already watched it, because let's be honest, a large chunk of you already have watched it, or we're going to watch it in very short order. Yes. Versus waiting for October, but some of you will wait, and if you aren't waiting, be courteous about yes. the spoilers. Mark your spoilers, or just Do don't spoil. Do not spoil. put spoilers in YouTube thumbnails, you jerks. I yeah. caught a screen cap of uh, the finale once when I logged into YouTube. Just, like, Monday morning, just, oh, there's a big old spoiler right there on YouTube. Thanks, guys. Uh, anyway, that's the news. That's the news. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's all there is. Yeah, there's not a lot, like I guess. Yep. Right. It's a tiny little bit of news. Mm-hmm. So we'll go ahead and move right along to the new comic. Yay. Friendship's Magic number 70. Starring Rainbow Dash. Yay! And the Grannies. Actually, it's mostly right. the grannies. It's mostly the grannies. Yeah. And it's written by Jeremy Whitley with art by Tony Cusito, Cusito, which is pencils, and colors by Heather Beckle, in which Dash is invited to, let's see, the Golden Horseshoe Club um, game night thing, and turns out to be bingo. Dash is bored. Turns out she was a pawn <laughs> to remind Applejack how boring this is, and then she makes extreme bingo, which winds up being more or less a sort of a scavenger hunt with the yep. bingo balls. And that's it. And then the, the Applejack's worried about the grannies because <laughs> El Dash and the word extreme doesn't seem like a good idea to her. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. It is. It's kind of interesting. There's some good points to it. it a, but Yeah, it's some kind of neat bits in the in the story, but the story itself is kind of... Threadbare? Yeah, almost non-existent. Yeah. It's a bit threadbare. There's it's pretty straightforward. Odd bits like there's a bit with a griffin. I was like, what? Yeah, that one's a bit odd. And yeah, it's a nice artwork. Pencils is good work here. There's some interesting character bits like uh, Rarity and one of the grannies. I can't remember which one's that. What is this? <laughs> yes. I can't remember, I can't remember, oh, which I remember one that my one name is. Granny Smith. Yeah, it's like, yeah, they totally admitted though, like that in the beginning. Like, yeah, they only brought Rainbow Dash in because she knew she'd say something about it because they were all bored out of their skulls playing bingo. Yes, but we didn't want to be rude. So uh, Dash would so brought... be rude for us. Because she we know hey, she wait. would. <laughs> this is boring. Yeah, it's just basically them going around downtown finding bingo balls. And Dash also getting a little worried because maybe I did take it a little too far. Mm-hmm. And that's the st- Everyone learns a lesson. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I, Applejack learned a lesson. Dash learned a lesson. Granny's learned a lesson. Yeah. It's yeah. It's a threadbare but serviceable plot. Uh, it's all right. But there's some nice little character moments in there, too, including the bit with Pinky just clearing off a table. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> yep. Tell me more, Re- Weary Traveler. It's interesting. Um, I'm not sure it's $4 interesting, but it's all right. It's, like I said, it's all right. 
That's all right. I'm just not sure if it's worth four bucks. Yeah, depends on what, how much four dollars is worth to you. Yeah, I guess uh, if you like Dash a lot, sure. But if not if you're more or less ambivalent to a Dash, might want to consider waiting for a cheaper price. Yeah, so that's that for the comic. Yep. But of course, our main thing for this episode is the washouts, the newest U.S. released episode to uh, come out. To quickly summarize, let's see, Scootaloo starts a new fan club for something called the Washouts when uh, Dash finds out and kind of flips out because it's not her. <laughs> and so she's trying to fr- figure that out and she's kind of upset about it. And then she go- and they wind up going to a washout show and Dash thinks it's actually pretty cool. And then uh, talks about Lightning Dust is there. And then Dash decides to take, take Scootaloo to the Wonderbolts, try to figure, to tell her, hey, no, don't do this. Don't do this thing and all this. And uh, the Scootaloo does it anyway, and Dash gets upset about that. And then da- Scootaloo tries dangerous stunts. Dash saves her. Uh, washouts are gone, I guess. And they start Scootaloo fan club, and that's it. Essentially. Yep. <laughs> with, with with a few details in throughout there that oh, are missing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's what we're going to get to. This is actually a pretty enjoyable Dash episode. Not going to lie. He says, that. of course, he's not saying it, but he's nodding. You can't hear that, but he's nodding. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was, it was a, a very enjoyable episode. That happened to be Dash. Big as thing, well. of course, <laughs> was obviously Lightning Dust returns first time since season three. Remember that was 2013. Yeah, I believe this actually this one was actually possibly it was either late 2012 or early 2013. It was a long time ago. Yeah, it's been Wonder a while. Academy. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen Lightning Dust. We saw what was who was supposed to be Lightning Dust be re- somewhat more recently, but still it wasn't her. Yeah, that was also Hasbro Girls. Yeah. Because she showed up in friendship games as Indigo Zap because change last second change because Hasbro objected for some reason. Yeah, something about the names. Yeah, the late name wasn't trademarkable, I believe, was the problem. Something like that, yeah. So what did Indigo Zap? But even though same hairstyle, same basic mannerisms, same voice actor. Yeah. <laughs> but nope, no, not the same character, maybe probably. I don't know how that works. <laughs> That's not worth getting into right now. <laughs> Yeah, this episode, this kind of finally dealt with the couple things that have been kind of hanging for a while with some of these characters. Yeah. In it, one it particular. Sort of dealt with it. Mostly dealt with it. At least acknowledged it. Yes. More. Directly more. acknowledged it more than it has the one time in the past. <laughs> yeah, the one time we got a line about it. But yeah, it's uh, finally, yeah, basically, the big one being Scootaloo can't fly. Like, just Google straight up saying, I can't fly. Yeah. Of course, it still could be that she might later, but <laughs> it's still but up in the air. Scootaloo's like, yeah, Scootaloo basically has given up any sort of Wonderbolt-type aspiration just because she knows she can't fly. And thus, can't join the Wonderbolts because you need to be able to fly. Yeah. So, it's kind of... We're kind of seeing that, and it kind of the interesting idea of that Dash is kind of contributing to Scootaloo's um, sense of self-worth, or not really contributing it, because... Exasperating the problem? Yeah, because... Unintentionally? Yeah, Dash keeps talking about how you're gonna, he's, Scootaloo's going to fall on her hoof steps and w- become a Wonderbolt and all that stuff, and he's like, no, I can't. Yeah. I really can't. That That was like one of the culminating points of this entire episode, was the, you know... Oh, the, the trying to remember her exact lines, but along the lines of uh, the only way I'm gonna live up to being you, I can't do. Hmm. <laughs> you want me to be like you, but I can't. That whole thing, that that, that realization, that culmination of that, mm-hmm. and resulting in the I can't fly. Mm-hmm. That was, yeah, that was that was a big moment. Yep, pretty big moment there. Uh, the thing is. I will say though this episode, the I think the thing is, uh, the ending kind of goes a little fast. Yes, I will agree with that one. It was uh, especially yeah, Scootaloo's to, realization. Yeah, once we get to about the sixteen, seventeen minute mark, it's like boom. Yeah, like, especially Scootaloo's final realization. I'm gonna do this. Nope, just instant. Nope, I'm done. <laughs> kind of a thing that. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah the the I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. 
Nope. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> of course, I would. You know, gung ho until that, you see the does, rocket. That does happen. But <laughs> it's like no it's like, way. <laughs> eh, it was a little bit quick. Yeah, that part was. Uh, my, my, that part wasn't for me. That made sense. Is I think the rest of it was just kind of like bam, bam, bam like this sudden um, bit with lightning dust and Scootaloo talking right there, and after all that stuff after, then just kind of dash or not dash. Uh, the dust is gone. It was literally just yeah. blasting off. Blasting off again. Team, like team Rocket. And, and she's, and she's screaming, Rivals for life! Yep. Which is interesting. That was like, a rather The whole resolution. thing with Lightning Us really isn't resolved. Lightning Us is still kind of a selfish jerk. Yep. Selfish jerk who doesn't think things so through. I wonder if she'll show up one more time, maybe, by before this show is over. Maybe. At least. Maybe. We'll see her again. Will she ever have a redemption arc? Hopefully not. We need well, a recurring she, villain. Well, remember, she also was us. almost at the end of Wonderbolt Academy. She, they almost remember that deleted scene. Right. Yeah. They're going to kind of let her still sign what somewhat be in the Wonderbolts. Yep. That one's completely can't that's be been, canon. <laughs> yep. That's no longer viable. Yep. That is no longer viable with this. Mm hmm. Well, it's weird because I actually thought with the beginning of the episode, I actually thought, wait, did is this this is the wrong one? Because this almost mimics the uh, which episode was that? The, I think it was was it mysterious Mandel? Yes, yeah, it was mysterious. It, it, the, it opens that. almost identically so to I was mysterious. Like, wait, I was a little like, wait, wait, wait I was confused. I was like, I was about to stop it. Yeah, and, the episode and, opens literally with Scootaloo starting another session of the Rainbow Dash fan club. And then uh, and then all of a sudden Scootaloo goes into the hyperdrive uh, and speech. Then, and then, yep, good meeting everyone up. So what we could change heck? everything over to and washouts. <laughs> I do what? like it. It's kind of weird. <laughs> this is kind of weird when you say it out loud. <laughs> he's chopping on your own fan. It's kind of weird. <laughs> And weird things where Dash almost gets that maybe she has an ego. <laughs> That'd be kind of yeah. egotistical. Yeah. Almost. So, almost gets it. So throughout this whole episode, watching Dash's interaction, it's interesting. You see you see her battling multiple different parts of her. Like, you, you see her ego coming to play a lot. And you see her constantly battling. I can't handle the Scootaloo like someone else more than me. Yes, you, you're seeing a lot of that, her ego, but you're also seeing it. I want Scootaloo to be safe. Exactly. You're seeing this. I uh, want to do what's best for Scootaloo. Well, it's interesting, though. Those two parts of her come to the same conclusion. We must not let Scootaloo do anything with the washouts. <laughs> yes, a lot of times it does. But later on, especially when Twilight comes in and reminds her of a few things, there is another aspect to that. What is best for Scootaloo isn't always, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. keeping Scootaloo safe is the best, but sometimes you, you have to her. let her do her thing. You can't control and, and her. And that's when you really started to see, at that point with Dash, you're starting to struggle with all of this. And I, I like how you can actually see this. They actually show her struggling and actually you know, doing the right thing again, letting her go. Yeah. It's like, you're right. I I can't control you. I can't stop you. Mm -hmm. And that that's that's what needed to happen. Was, <laughs> I don't want you to do this. It's dangerous. And yes, part of me <laughs> just you know I want you to look up to me because I'm ego. But I can't stop you. I have to let you do what you do. But she was still there. No, it's still not there. Kelly Sheridan. I thought it was for sure. It's Kelly Sheridan. No, nope. nothing. Just it's Britt Irving. Huh. Wow, I think I'm pretty sure I just actually relayed a whole bunch of bad information then. Possibly. Because <laughs> it, yeah. it sounded like so alike. Because I know, I know Kelly Sheridan did play Indigo's app. I know that for a fact. Yeah. That's really interesting. What was it? Uh, Rona Rees played Rolling Thunder. Yes, oh, no, you brought Australian. that up. We have our first Australian bounty. It's great. Aussie. She's great. Yeah. Yep, Rolling Thunder. She got a scar on her eye. She got mm. a scar. And she winked. Yeah, that was the thing I noticed. Like, I thought that was going to be, you know, because the, we didn't see the characters yet. I thought that was going to be like, you know, Stallion or something. Nope. And she, because, the, you know, wink at the, the wink mayor at the, the audience, audience and make who one then of, fainted. One of the mayors passed out. And, and then, no, it's uh, Rolling Thunder, the mayor. The mayor. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sneak that in. <laughs> yes. Also, Andrew McNee played Short Fuse, the other one. Short Fuse, well, yes. He was literally short and had severe Very... anger management issues. Yep. Which he... 
Han doesn't want you to get on his case about. Yep. So yeah, the oh, washouts. should actually see a therapist about that. Yeah. So yeah, so let's talk about the washouts. The washouts. Green and black monster energy. Yep, extreme. It was. <laughs> oh mm. god, it was so cliche. Extreme. Yep, their whole thing is super dangerous stunts. Yeah. Chug, chug a monster, then draw off the spray. <laughs> 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 or chug a Mountain Dew. Yeah, Mountain Dew and Monster. Got to see it all together. <laughs> Eat a bag of Doritos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're all former Wonder Bolts. They all failed out of the Wonder Bolts in some yeah. case. Although it's interesting, Lightning Dust never actually made it into the Wonder Bolts. She was just she was in the she she didn't even make it through the, the academy. I think she failed out of the, the academy. They all washed out. Is the idea? Yeah. They washed out of the Wonder Bolts. Well, the Underworlds condensed. Never, yeah, never made it through the Academy. So, yeah, it's a bit interesting. And they all just, like, don't care about safety. It's like, that's going to get you killed. Oh, dear. But then they let Skulu join, who never actually made it into the Underworlds yeah, Academy. That, that was a weird one. It's like, you have to be You, you have, have to, to be a washout in order to join the washouts. And then they let her join anyway. Yeah, that was a weird part. It's like, oops. I guess, well, I mean, I guess it sort of makes sense. They don't care about rules. <laughs> I was like, Lightning Why would they care about much, their own rules? Unless, of course, it's Lightning Dust finding out how much it hurt Dash. Yeah, that would be a thing, because Lightning Dust is apparently a vindictive jerk still. Who doesn't care about the safety of even small children. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like, uh, yeah, Scootaloo, Scootaloo is no, you're a, a minor. Child. You can't actually do this. Apparently, what? their laws are different. That's what I'm assuming. Twilight, Twilight, hey, Twilight, step in. You can stop this. You literally can stop this. Yeah, it's like... Sorry, Scootaloo's is there, a minor? You, it's just like... Don't you have to have guardian approval? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well... But then we'd have to acknowledge Scootaloo's Scootaloo, family. Yeah. <laughs> we can't have that! <laughs> oh, Apparently God. not. Please! Please! The aunts. Bring the aunts back. Please. They've been in the show. They have. They have appeared. In the show? Yeah, not the, yeah. They have appeared in the comics. I was going to say, in. excuse me, what did you see? Bring them into the show, please. <laughs> Bring them in. Make it, make it canon in the show. And also, yeah. Well, the parents are still around. Obviously, we know that too. But parents yes. are pretty uh, don't not caring, <laughs> <laughs> negligent. Yeah. As far as we can tell. But yeah. But it's also interesting because like. I, I think, you know, the kind of the echoes of um, Twilight Time way back when it was say like, Twilight and Scootaloo are still kind of close-ish. Close-ish a bit, yeah. Because, like, yeah, there's that bit at the end where, you know, Scootaloo is, you know, Twilight's holding Scootaloo and everything. It's like, aw. Aw. Well, there's also, you know, it's you know, not Twilight that weird. Was... Oh, sure, Scootaloo, sure. Sure, it's not that weird. Because it's only not weird when blue. you're on, their, on the other side. <laughs> well, I just remember the, the sibling thing because, you know, Dash is freaking out about um, Scootaloo liking someone else. And then Apple Jack is like, it's oh. like Apple who starts liking bananas. Well, you're all, y'all going to tell me if she does, right? <laughs> yeah, just because you can't do pears anymore. Because they pear. are half pears. What if it was strawberries? Oh. Because <laughs> that's already a thing. Completely glare at straw. Just. I, yeah, I can just imagine that the two shows of them glaring up. at each other as they walk by. I, I could just imagine Scootaloo just ran, and not even involving, Apple not yeah, Apple Bloom, not not even involving what's her face with the strawberries, and just Apple Bloom walks and I, you know, strawberries are actually pretty good, and just pan to Miss Strawberry, whatever her name is, just stops. Something feels off. <laughs> No, you know, even better, just as Apple, Apple Jack, Jack just, just looks up, and then there she is holding a basket of strawberries, just grinning. Just oh, this evil just, grin. just something. I just like the <laughs> Apple Jack hears it, just looks out into the distance, and just strawberry. strawberry. Oh, no, something's wrong. Someone's <laughs> someone's watching me. <laughs> so Apple Jack just this knows. Bananas, bananas. No, bananas. <laughs> it's, I just love the zoom in real quick. Zoom, zoom snap, you zoom in. Zoom zoom film. <laughs> she does, right? <laughs> Uh, also, also interesting was um there was the autograph session and you know that Twilight and Dash literally run into each other. Dash starts my fault, my fault, and my then fault, da- fault. it turns out Twilight has three signed posters. Like, why do you have three? Why not? <laughs> They're probably different posters. Gotta sell these on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Darn straight. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is interesting. Dash's first reaction. <laughs> my fault, my fault. 
<laughs> You've been through this before, haven't you, Dash? Yeah. Flying through town occasions. and running into someone. On multiple occasions. You just learned to... Yeah, that's my fault. Not bad. Well, it's interesting in their uh, quest to try to get all these background ponies and stuff into the crowd. They put, like, Octavia in there, Octavia. which is, like, interesting. An interesting choice. You'd think it'd be vinyl and not Octavia. And also, what was her name? I think that one gothic pony from way back when the... Uh, uh, I don't remember their names. Yeah, the, the one... There was a Inky couple Rose, different ones. I think. Inky Rose? I think that it was, was one her. of them. I think pretty sure it was her. That was it, the one with, no, out, with Rarity shredding yeah, on his Yeah, that was that one. But then, then there was the other one. The other one that had the sister who was super bright and cheery. And that was right, that one Right, with episode. Rarity selling the princess dress, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe so. I can't remember her name. Yeah, I can't, I'm not sure they gave us her name. It probably was in the credits, I don't remember. I've been here since day one, and they still haven't given me a name. Oh, oh no, now I'm quoting a different series I shouldn't be. <laughs> People keep making parody screens on Derpy Bureau. That, too. Mm. Veggie Tales. <laughs> God dang it. That's weird, man. It is weird. Uh, uh, I don't think I said it yet, but yeah, Nick, 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 Nick Confalone Confalone wrote this. Did a good job. Yeah, I, I've come to really, whenever I see his name, I get really excited. Oh, hey, this could be a good one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I apparently I've seen some reactions to this, this episode. All people are kind of not super thrilled with it. I think some people are actually expecting more from Lightning Dust. Oh, like the, they're, they're, yeah, they're people get hyped up about the return of an antagonist. And I think some she people, wasn't again, all that felt important. the pacing was bad because, yeah, this, there was, was some pacing issues. The, the, end. Ending, the ending was rather rushed. Yeah, you spent a long time on the other stuff. I almost forgot Spitfire. Well, we totally skipped over the Spitfire. I was going to bring it back yeah, eventually if we had uh, a lull. <laughs> yeah, Spitfire was in there and she Full gave, body and hoof cast drinking through a straw. blatantly kind of a parody on like a lot of the 80s, 90s uh anti-drug yeah. stuff particularly because like yeah hey kids don't do these drugs we're going to tell you in explicit detail about what they do to you and everything like oh that don't sounds great i'm gonna do some drugs <laughs> don't do a weed it'll literally kill you because <laughs> that's what ha it's what happens it, it, you know studies have proven that the dare program doesn't work yeah, what it does all of this is all these kids know about this stuff they would have been completely ignorant of Yes, and you're talking to, like, teenagers and younger. This is super dangerous. Their first reaction is, I'm awesome, do it. let's do it. You can't, it doesn't I'm work. Do it. They think they're invincible. Yep. It doesn't work. I'm invincible. That's the last thing that you'll ever say before you get killed. Yeah, uh, it's drinking through a straw. Yeah, three times. Same. Yep. Here's a wonderful hat. Here's a wonderful hat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then they lost it. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. The other thing was um, tell me that you got those things so you could tear them into little bitty pieces and throw them off a cliff. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's how Dash gets rid of her problems: to tear them up into little bitty pieces and then throw them off a cliff. Yep. Venting. It works. Some people have different ways of venting. You know, sometimes you just get really angry, go find a cardboard box and a big stick, and beat the crap out of the box. It's sometimes very relieving. Right. Not a huge amount that we missed. Yeah, not really. Um... There was one scene that was a bit interesting. Twilight and Dash flying. You know, she might get hurt. There oh, might yeah, be that. someone else who gets who's hurt as well. And Dash having to acknowledge, okay, yeah, emotions, dang it. <laughs> Yeah, Ugh. but Twilight's reaction, too, she got really somber, too. Yeah, because she kind of looked off to the side. Well, yeah, she, she knows Dash doesn't like dealing with emotions. No, it seemed almost introspective on that one, too. It's like, I don't know. I think you might huh. be reading I, I might be reading part. too much into it, but it was a bit odd. I think it, it comes across as someone she has a bit of trepidation about bringing this up to Dash because she yeah. knows Dash might not react well to being told this. Yep. That is that is a viable. The thing with Twilight and Dash was Dash when she's seeing the show in King of Maze, jaw drops, and Twilight just casually just reaches just down and pick your job. <laughs> just, just casually while smirking, like <laughs> you like the washouts, don't you, Dash? <laughs> Remember, kids, people do those dangerous stunts, have practiced them a lot, and have already made all the preparations when something may go wrong yep. to make well, sure people don't get hurt. Of course, in the course of that seems went done with lightning us at the end. It's like. Light Nuts just didn't care about anyone. Yeah. Like, nope, you're doing this. They had that whole care. disclaimer. <laughs> hey, remember, you don't do, don't try this at home. Yeah. 
<laughs> Don't try this at home. And then Lightning's just like, nope, too late. You're doing this. You're going to do this. <laughs> oh, no. Because she don't care. Yep. Because she's a jerk. Yeah. Anyway, Trey. It was actually a pretty fun episode, in my opinion. It I was. Really actually quite, quite liked it. It was. I liked it a lot. Characters, the interactions between Dash and Scootaloo, and, and dealing with oh, some yeah, of those... you're a sucker for that. Well, that too, but dealing with those hard-hitting issues, actually drilling down and hitting those emotional issues is something that's good to see, and I like how they did it. The resolution was a little bit rushed, but otherwise, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I guess that's that about this episode. Yep. We gotta move on now. Yeah, we got my fan content, of course. And to, as a reminder, you can find the links for the fan content at pony 411libsoncom slash show notes. Links, got, for yeah, the, links to the music and, and fanfic. Yes. Speaking of music, we'll yes. start off with that. I got one this week that I want to feature, and it is TCB's Whitetail Woods. is it's a bit interesting it's a ambient song off of an experimental album that's about nature noises and i i I like this one it's it's an ambient song so it's a bit kind of hard to talk about but it starts off with like nature noises just for the first half of it but then it it comes in with the 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 heavier bass sounds as a sort of a drone i like I like how I did that, and I like the use of the nature sounds. They use it like different repeating clips as instruments. I think it worked really, really well. Also, the running water kind of makes me need to go to the bathroom. Yeah, nature. Nature noises. Nature. Took a while for the actual music to kick in. It's like half halfway through it's the song. It's not quite halfway through, but yeah, it's not pretty quite, far but along. Pretty close. And it comes in very slow that you barely even notice initially because it comes in very quiet and slow. And it's a lot more intense than I actually thought it would be based on it being an ambient song. Yeah. It gets pretty intense after a while. Yeah, you get the stuff like it sounds, the water kind of, almost sounds like going backwards. Yeah. So it's a, interesting. It's very interesting. It's a very intense nature walk. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of the songs on the album. It's an experimental music kind of album, so your mileage may vary on whether you like some of the music and that they're very different and some are very weird, but... Yeah, I like this one, so I wanted to feature it. That's all the music. Uh, And fanfics, no updates, oddly enough, again. But I do have a new uh, fic, and it's called Each Small Step by Crickus. And it's about uh, Arya and Sunset. Mostly about Arya, though. Mostly about Arya. And it's more or less the journey of someone who's incredibly self-destructive and is also bringing everyone else around her down with her. More or less. And that's the gist of it. Yeah. Without <laughs> spoiling. Yeah, without spoiling stuff. But there's also some heavier themes in there. There are the pay attention to the tags when you read this one, for sure. So make sure, you know, content warnings there. Yeah. Make sure to pay attention to those. They're not super bad, but they are present in the fic. Yeah. This is also written by for the same contest as the one last week was, so it's kind of a similar sort of vague theming in a sense yeah it's a 13,000 word fic divided into three chapters so it's not a very long read either yeah it, <laughs> oof. so you can wide eyed over there okay I did enjoy this one it, yeah. it was well written that beginning of that second chapter there's certain paragraphs that are unfortunately familiar Oof, yeah. It's well written, but yeah, that it some of them hit, hit kind of close to home. Yeah, it's a, but it's yeah, not bad for it. It's actually good. Yeah, it's a good one. It's good, but it's not enjoyable in the traditional <laughs> sense of the word. Yeah, reading through some of those, I'm going, oh, it's pretty heavy. Yeah, 
So just uh, yeah, again, again, I'm really dead serious about that. Pay pay attention to those content warning tags. Uh, but yeah, it's a, a very interesting look at something. In fact, I kind of like that it's not entirely doesn't it's not a little spoilery, but it doesn't entirely wrap up neatly. Yeah, there's there's the ending is a bit open, which is so part, probably in part due to the there was a word limit on the contest. Yeah, you had to go only up to fifteen thousand. Part of it's just because. The story didn't need to wrap up neatly. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. That's the fic. Go check that out again. Content warnings. Pay attention to them. Yeah. So that's the end of this episode. Yep. Or, that's it. Mm-hmm. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you are interested in, t- you know, hearing more of our, well, talking nonsense, <laughs> you could check out past and pu- future episodes of our podcast at pony 411 dot libsyn.com again it's spelled l-i-b-s-y-n you get all that's where the rss feed is, is and whatnot you can check that out and you can also go to youtube.com slash pony on one and check us out there like comment subscribe check click the notification bell icon thing and hope it actually works if thanks you like. youtube yeah thanks for uh breaking everything <laughs> You can also search it for us on uh, iTunes, search for Pony411 and rate and review there and subscribe if you want. And there's play.google.com slash music. You can search for Pony411 on that and hopefully find us. Again, they are changing things. I don't know how exactly, just I heard they're changing stuff. Stitcher.com is another place you can go or you can use the Stitcher iOS or Android apps and search for Pony411 on those and, you know, subscribe as you want. Apparently we're on other places. What was it? I saw Pod Bay or something. I just yeah. saw us listed there. Like I didn't put it there, but okay. <laughs> yeah, there's certain aggregate sources. Yeah. There's, of course, Ponyville Live, PonyvilleLive.com. You can see us there. It's the YouTube version. You just click on it, You know, go to the YouTube, whatever, and so you can see other podcasts and radio stations on there as well. And one of those radio stations is Ponyville FM. You can hear, hear us on there every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, along with live DJs and a lot of really great music. If you want to contact us, you can do so via email, pony411podcast at gmail.com. You can send us, you know, comments and criticisms and whatnot. Uh, what did you think of the washouts? You know, it's the, you know, extreme sports, scootaloos in danger, dashes, jealous, blah. <laughs> what do you think of all that stuff? Yep. You can also contact us via Facebook, facebook.com slash pony411. Like us there, see the new episodes that come out, whatnot, um, all that jazz. And of course, there's Twitter. That's where we usually say things on the social media. It's, uh, we're at Pony Four and One. Say silly things, quote the show, whatever. We make promises about not spoiling uh, unaired in the U.S. episodes. Yes, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that, and you shouldn't do it either. Yes, or at least if you're going to do it, make sure it's very clear what you're about to do. Yeah. And of course, there's our personal tours. I'm at Nemesis Prime One. He's at Alcatraz with a seven and seven T and underscore at the end. Like I said earlier at the top of the show, I've, I've rewatched Gravity Falls. Got emotional. Emotionable. Yeah, and then uh, Master Chief Collection's fixed, and I'm playing that. Yeah, again. I'm so rusty. Yeah. <laughs> Halo Four comes up too much. It's the one I'm least rusty at because <laughs> the gameplay matches other games I've been playing. Of course. That's it for this episode. Tune in next time. We'll be talking about a rock hoof and a hard place. Fun. Yes, indeed. That'll be an episode. That'll be um, interesting to check out. (laughs) So, hope you tune in then. But until then, though, please pony responsibly. See ya. See ya.